down to one and a half parsec. On screen. Weapons or advancements. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish to hear energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Metal Rift. Greetings. He is no longer the dead Dalek. He has recovered. So, I don't get to call him the dead Dalek anymore. Sad Mm. face. We also have Scarecrow. Good evening! (laughs) Three fruit loops short of a Happy Meal, Amy! (laughs) I don't know if that was aimed at you or me. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's aimed at Amy because I can. And then, last but not least, we have Stuart, the not the news guy. The news guy. The news he guy. He really got fired this time. <laughs> Stuart, the not news guy, news guy. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Hilton <Yeah. laughs> uh, Anyway, on tonight's show, we have quite a bit to cover. Uh, we have. The winner of the evil ship crew, the f- the final announcement of who got CAG. If you haven't worked it out, there's probably something really wrong with you. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. Um, new Age of Ultron trailer. We've watched it, and we want to have a bit of a chat about it, because it looks pretty cool. And I have something to say about that big time. Oh, yes. Later. Later. Save it. And last but not least, we... Um, we're going to talk about an article that popped up about a uh, sort of a hypothesis about Boba Fett's role on Tatooine in the first movie. Everyone's S- favorite bounty hunter. Everyone's favorite bounty hunter. Yeah, so I can have fun dissecting that one. Oh yes. Yes, yeah, I, I will. See, that that is a specifically a Stuart Hawk Scarecrow. God damn it. Uh, um, segment because to be honest, I'm not really fussed that much one way or the oh, other. Oh, I will. I am really to get in on this yeah so i think fig- i figured you guys would all be for that so anyway let's first let's start off with the ultimate starship what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the finalist lists and we're going to choose who we think would make the best would best fit the role and then at the very end when we get to cag i will tell you who wins anyway <laughs> yeah. whatever um so first up, we got ship's captain. The finalists for ship's captain were Michael, Cavill, Darth Vader, Scorpius, the Mistress, and Khan. Who do we think should win that? David, uh, Metal Rift. Um, I'll go with Khan as long as we're talking about the original series. Not yeah, that. original series Khan. Good, then easy. That's no questions asked. I'm, I am surprised that Scorpius did win. He won by, like, two votes. <laughs> oh, okay. And let me guess, Khan was that two votes behind? Yeah. <laughs> so that seems fair enough, but yeah. Khan yeah. Union scene is a strategic genius. Yeah. Um, what about Stuart? Who do you think should should have won Stuart? Uh, I'm actually happy with Scorpius. Just to be honest, I think it's a good choice. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, Khan's a good choice as well, but I prefer Scorpius over Khan. Yeah. Yeah, Scorpius was the one that won it. Uh, Scarecrow, who would you have chosen? Ironically, the person I would have chosen didn't even make the list. Well, sucks to be you. Moving right along. If I had to choose, if, I, if my choice was on there, it would have been Grand Moff Tarkin. Ooh. Yeah, um... I see him more as first see, officer then. Yeah. See, the, the yeah. problem with Grand Moff was that he was on the list, but there was more nominations for Vader. And I was trying to sort of have one from each series, unless it was, like, overwhelmingly voted for. So Vader sort of pipped him in the Star Wars vote, so... Yeah, it's all good. I, 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 I completely understand Grand Moff Tarkin, like, yeah. God, it's so good. Okay. Evil bastard is us. <laughs> so, so, anyway... Amy? Amy? I don't really have an opinion. Don't really have an opinion? Okay. Do you want to just first. Do you want to just skip this segment and come back to us later? Okay. I've got to watch a lot of event, uh, sci-fi ones. Okay. Okay. Now, admittedly, on this list is two people that I honestly have no idea because I haven't seen the series. I'll get to that 
when we get there. Okay, for first officer, we have nominated is Todd from Stargate Atlantis, Ash from Alien, Grievous from Star Wars, Zod from Man of Steel, Maximilian from Black Hole, and Diana from V. Haven't seen Maximilian, sorry, haven't seen Black Hole or, oh, pardon me, or the original V, so, yeah. Who do we think should have won that? Same order as last time, go. Um, sorry, I was in the, my brain dropped out. Who was on the list again? Oh, God damn it. Todd, Stuck at Atlantis, Ash, Alien, General Grievous, Star Wars, Zod, Men of Steel, Zod, Maximilian Black Hole, Diana V. Zod, because it, I was thinking Grievous, but I'm thinking after seeing his work in the Clone Wars series, he would have made a better captain or even in the case commander of the air group, but sadly he didn't make that nomination at all. Yeah. He, I, he wasn't even nominated for either of those. Mm, I know. He was only well, nominated for first officer. So. Mm. Okay, Stuart. See, this is where I actually wish Grand Moff Tarkin was nominated, because this is my choice for him. Yeah. Yes. I, I think Grand Moff Tarkin would be a, a better first officer than the captain. Yeah. And I could have also said, sorry, but I could have also said the uh, Will Riker clone from Trek, um, Tom Riker, the evil one. Yeah, see, I stayed away from, quote, evil clone type characters on the list for as much as possible. <coughs> Rapper cut. We're getting Quiet. there. You're not helping. <laughs> so, anyway, Scarecrow, who would you have first officer go? Probably Zod. Zod? Either him or honourable mention would have been um, Khan. Yeah. Well, I actually like that Todd won. More because I like the actor that plays him. Like, to me, Todd is a captain, not a sort of first officer. But he's a badass in his own right. So. Yeah. Okay. Weapons officer. Now, this one has actually got two very funny entries on it. Simeon from Stargate Universe. The dude from Prison Break. Um, Law <laughs> from Star Trek The Next Gen. Megatron from Transformers because apparently he had enough nominations. Mm. I, I, I could sort of imagine him with his knees up around his eardrums behind a console trying to press buttons with his long glory fingers. <laughs> just getting frustrated at the console. Please, just use, just use old school Megatron and he is the weapon. <laughs> <laughs> um, a new Cylon from Battlestar Galactica, which is sort of the, the robot y one, not a human form, which is sort of a strange choice. We have um, General Stahl from Doctor Who, who's a Sontaran, and Boba Fett from Star Wars. So, that I'm seeing it right now, Boba Fett. If there's any question that involves Boba Fett, Boba Fett is the correct answer. You fail. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no. Um. I I'm gonna go with Megatron just because, as I said, he he can turn into the flipping weapon himself if he wants to. Yeah. Just 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 mount him on on the starship. Yeah. I I the, the funniest thing about Megatron. I wouldn't is, do that with Megatron. I do that with Galvatron. Yeah. Yes. Bigger gun. Because he's well, he, he, it's, this is meant to be bridge crew. He's not meant to be mounted on the hull or anything like that. So just imagine Megatron, a, a, a 10, 15 <laughs> meter tall robot. Crammed into a human-sized chair, it'd be like me hopping in a Volkswagen Beetle. It just wouldn't end well. It's like <laughs> just knees kidding. up around his ears, no. long gangly fingers trying to press buttons on the console, going, "Blast! This console doesn't work." <laughs> ah! You have failed me yet again, Starscream. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and everyone just looks at him and goes, "What's a Starscream?" It's like, "Shut up! I'm trying to press the buttons." <laughs> it's like, "Shoot over there." It's not working. Yes, it is. No, it's not. We <laughs> get the point. <laughs> well, the English, his aim is as bad as a stormtrooper's. <laughs> so, why do you think he turns into a gun and gives himself the star scream? Because <laughs> apparently, star scream aims worse. Star scream actually hits half the time he's using Megatron. Fair point. Okay, so the winner of that one was General Stahl from Doctor Who, which actually surprised me. I honestly expected a Boba Fett revolution, and it just yeah. didn't happen. Just I, didn't I happen. So my vote was my vote would have been down for Law. Yeah. But that no. was me. Okay. 
anything but weapons officer, to be honest. He was more intellectual than he was deadly. Yeah. Okay. He's also a sneaky bastard. You you would be expecting him to be intellectual right up to the point where he drives the big ass knife into your back. Mm. So. Now, moving on to helm control. Now, this one I actually added somebody into the list, Sebulba, from Star Wars, because I was trying <laughs> to find, <laughs> trying to come up with a sixth person, and I just thought Sebulba would be the most hilarious person in helm control. So you've got Sebulba from Star Wars, Baal from SG One, Boomer from Battlestar Galactica, the first nomination of two people for the price of one, the Dura Sisters from Deep Space Nine. Once again, Return of the Dark Knight himself, Darth Vader. He pops up. Oh my god, that's he, so he, bad. He just keeps coming back. He just really does. He, he never dies. He just... No, no, no. Okay. That is Voldemort. No, yeah. no, I can just imagine no, Vader No, let's leave Moldy Butt out of this. No, no. I can now imagine Vader going, Where is Padme? Where is she? <sighs> Last but not least, Gull Dukat from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Oh, damn. So... Who would we have flying the ship? Now, remember, this is in helm control. It is physically flying the super massive ship because flying. So, oh, st standard order. Alright, God. I was going to go so just for the shits and giggles, but then I heard the greatest name in DS9 villainy, Gold Dukat, and I'm now torn. I guess Sebulba is cool because he kind of rests on his hands rather than his legs, but Dukat has some sort of tactical advantage just with being a goal. So, Dukat. Yeah. Okay, I'm choosing Sebulba, but only if he gets a pit droid with him. <laughs> pit droids are <laughs> hilarious. Uh, Fanta Pudo. <laughs> uh, Scarecrow. Of the, of the members listed, the only two that actually fit as a pilot for me are Boomer and Vader and quite frankly Vader would be a waste of helm control. Boomer. Yes. Bo yeah. Uh, for me it sort of leans towards Sebulba only for the hilariousness. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's more because I've got this sick and twisted fantasy that this crew would actually be part of a comedy TV show. <laughs> because no, no, no. We cannot have these guys as space balls. It, we cannot <laughs> introduce these guys to the major assholes of the universe. It, <laughs> Ultimate <laughs> Evil Ship was filmed for the live studio audience. <laughs> we just got beat by. We just got hit by assholes. <laughs> what? Yeah. Assholes. Who? Who else is an asshole here? God yeah, damn! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you are surrounded by assholes. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, moving right along to this is security chief. So this is the guy that, if someone invades your ship, goes to deal with it. We have General Chang from Star Trek, Roy Batty from Blade Runner, Boba Fett again from Star Wars. It, I see a pattern with Star Wars nominations. I really do. <laughs> um, Roland Sandoval something from uh, yeah that one. From Earth Final Conflict. I knew that you were going to jump in and say it for me, so... We have the T-1000 from Terminator 2 and Ooh. Predator from the Predator movies. Now, remember, if this was a comedy, I could just see this character hiding in a shadow somewhere, jumping out going, Rawr! Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> Surprise! And it's like, no, back in your corner. <laughs> so... Oh, God. So, who would you go with? Okay. I'm still going with my rule. Boba Fett, but only just. Otherwise, it'd be Predator. Well, Predator was the one that won it, so... Mm. Me, I would have I would have gone for a T-1000, simply because I would love to see the T-1000 meet Replicata. <laughs> no. Get out my sheep. <laughs> Get out of my sheep. No, I want. I want. Um, I. I, I think Greaves actually probably be a better security off, um, officer, just because then we could have an asthmatic jerk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I. I still like the. Like, like, like Scarecrow. Yeah. I still like the idea of Predator standing in a corner somewhere. Someone walks past. He jumps out and goes. Ah! At which point they're like, "No, go over there, back to your corner." He's like, "Ah!" And clicks away. Yes. <laughs> or, or, or he's just in the corner going, why am I on this show? <laughs> why am I on this ship? 
Why can't I eat <laughs> What did I do wrong to deserve this? Uh, and I should have killed Sigoni Weaver instead. Anyway. Moving along to. Hang on, I didn't get my two cents on this one. Fine. Sheesh. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry <laughs> up. Well, again, the person I would have voted in did not get nominated. But well, then it doesn't count. You, you can only choose from the nominations. I'd have to. I'll have to say Predator because he, he would be my second choice. First would have been Saren Arturius, Arturius from Mass Effect One. Yeah. Oof. Okay. Yeah. He's got the scariness and he's got the assholeish down. Okay, now this is a very interesting list. Almost everybody on this list has appeared before so far. We've got this is for science officer. We've got Law again. We've got Michael again. And we've got Besta again. Or maybe this was his first appearance. Either way, there's gonna be a lot of Besta later. We've also got Dr. Frankenstein, the Master from Doctor Who, and Gaius Boltar from Battlestar Galactica, so... Uh, let's just get grab Gaius Boltar right now and shove him out the airlock. Let's not even <laughs> consider him. Just out the airlock, please. <laughs> Oof. Wait, you don't like him that much? There's some hatred there! Wait! The guy I need, isn't I need, uh, evil. He's led around by his... Freaking strong, like a puppet. I'm sorry, but I need to ask which Doctor Frankenstein, the original Doctor Frankenstein. Damn, because if it was if we were going off a comedy TV show, I'd go Gene Wilder Frankenstein. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so, for me, it's probably out of all of them, Michael or the Master. Simply yeah. because they're both scientists. Law's See, sciencey. Doctor Frankenstein is pseudo sciencey. Besta is sciencey. Boltar is a loony. So that just leaves the master or Michael. And between the two, I prefer the master, even though he's psycho. See, I would love the master because sort of the... from, from a comedy standpoint, they just have to randomly um, regenerate into Missy just in front of everyone. Wait, so are we talking about, like, David Tennant Master? Uh, no, we're talking original series Master. That I could see happening. Hell, I'd see him on the, the old command The bearded douchebag. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he looks cool. I actually prefer that that Master over Missy. So, anyway. Um, who hasn't had their say? Nobody. Perfect. Moving right along. <laughs> okay. Chief Medical Officer. Oh, yeah, the one that won that was the Master. We have Neity, we have from SG1, which I thought was actually an intriguing choice. Um, mm. Eldele Nes Niska? Niska? Somebody rather Niska? From Firefly. The DD-13 medical droid, the thing that helped fix up Vader? Is that correct, Stuart? Yes. Good, I got my Star Wars right. I'm Star Wars incorrectly. Oh, Whoa, that's, oh, an, that's echo. an echo. Where'd that echo come from? Rift. I've got nothing on my end. That was coming from your mic. Oh, oh god. Well, it's gone oh. now. Whoops, it's back. Oops, gone. <laughs> I'm all confused. Anyway. Uh, Why well, aren't you confused? Yeah, I'm always confused. We have <laughs> Chief Medical Officer. We have Davros. Michael ag again. Again. And Deanna from V again. So, who would we have out of all Davros. of these people Davros Davros no questions asked uh, no questions I, asked now I put my money down on Neity because she is downright devious I put my money on Neity simply because she's the only character on this list that we have actually genuinely genuinely seen heal somebody in any way shape or form we've, we've got she's tortured and fucked up a lot of people yeah Niska we've seen torturing people DD-13 we saw floating around. Davros turns people into Daleks. Michael turns people into hybrids. And Lizard Lady is a Lizard Lady. I, I don't know V. <laughs> I'm going medical. I'm going um, DD-13 medical robot. Just because it failed Vader for, for fuck's sake. Mm. Like, it's Vader. Still didn't fix Hank Crimson's um, bad acting. 
It's a goddamn oh, yeah. droid. It doesn't give a shit either way, whether it's good or evil or neutral. It's programmed to look after a single person. That doesn't make it evil. That just makes it a tool. Yeah. Mm. Well, it makes a robot. Anyway. So we... basically, he'd be the equivalent of the EMH and Voyager, to be honest. Yeah. Sort except, of. Except the EMH has got, I don't know. The EMH, is, uses. The EMH yeah. is programmed for good, relatively speaking. EMH is programmed to, to heal at any cost. Yeah. Until yeah. he starts adding subroutines and fucking around with things. Yeah. He, he really does go rampant. Yeah. Um, yes. One of my, one of my names just sounded like R2 and it got really creepy. Hmm. Anyway, so the winner of that one was Davros. Okay. Ship's AI. Now, this one I thought was hilarious because there's quite a few... <laughs> Why you miss communications officer? Uh, uh, because he did. It's an evil, it's an evil ship. ship. Why do they Why need? Do they whoa, need whoa, whoa. Echo, officer? Echo. Because that's not me. I know. It's Melrose. It keeps coming through Melrose. Then. Really? I've got the yeah. I've got the Skype up. What the hell? Okay, so apparently I don't have a finalist list saved for oh, comms course. officer. I'll go find I'll it. Find it. Okay. Seriously? In the, uh, in the meantime, ships AI uh, will steal with ghost hunting. Okay, um... Yeah, we're not echoing at the moment. Okay, anyway, ships AI. We have Skynet from Terminator, Howl 9000 from 2001 A Space Odyssey, Agent Smith from The Matrix, M5 Multitronic Unit from Star Trek Original Series, Gabriel from Andromeda, Master Control Program from Tron. Now, I honestly had my money on Howl to win this. Be because I can protest against that. I don't think Hal was evil at all. He killed people. Yeah, it's true. By the he went nuttier than a fruitcake. Come on, you go to an anime club with people that are nuttier than Hal. That's the thing. I don't watch anime. No, he, was, Dave. he was talking to me. <laughs> yeah. And we can't talk. We go there too. Yeah, we're admins there. We're yeah. definitely batshit insane. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm not. Let's see. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. You're, you're, you're dating Scarecrow. Of course, you're crazy. That fair, fair point. <laughs> I, I, I second that point. Okay. I wasn't, right, I back, wasn't going near that one. Back, <laughs> to, back to the AI. Um, back to the AI. I don't it's, get how um, Agent Smith from um, the Matrix Matrix comes into it. Um, because I opened it up to... Because technically he is an artificial intelligence by definition because he's a computer program that lives in an artificial reality. Therefore, he is an AI. He's just never sort of... It's the sort of thing where it's like something is sci-fi, but you don't think of it until as sci-fi until you sort of take a closer look at it. Uh, it's that sort of thing. The Matrix. We don't have enough time. Yeah, I know. But uh, uh, long story short, he is technically an AI. He's just never seen as a ship-controlling or item-controlling AI. Okay, because he's just a random program. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm tied between Skynet and Agent Smith. Yeah. Well, Ag Agent Smith won it, so. Yeah. I'm going. I'm going MCP. Yeah, MCP got quite a lot of votes for a giant floating red face thing. It's still awesome. I'm gonna have to go, um, Gabrielle, because damn. Michael Shanks. Evil Danny. Yeah, it was. See, I only just finished watching Andromeda recently. Like, I, I, I ploughed through Babylon 5 and I'm ploughing through Andromeda now. And I've only just seen the first episode that he was in. Only a couple of weeks ago, I was like, oh my god, it's Daniel. <laughs> Wait till you get later in it. Um, you actually get Teal'c in there as an AI. Yeah, I've, I've seen that episode too. I actually watched those two episodes specifically just so that I knew what the hell I was going to be talking about. So, seeing Teal'c and Daniel on there together was just a little bit hilarious. So That's anyway, famous. um, moving on. Uh, Stuart. Communication officer. Stuart, you got comms officer. Ah, oh, comms. Uh, yes, I did, and I lost it again. Hang on. <laughs> you. F okay, <laughs> three. Barker, yes. Two, one. You're fired. Damn it. Again. You were meant to everyone was meant to jump in on that one. I thought I set it up really well. <laughs> that joke is is, is Thales weak old bread, mate. I'm well right, aware. Comms officer. Comms officer. Okay. It was, it was it was four people. 
Besta, Bowl Queen, uh, Besta from Babylon 5, Bowl Queen from Star Trek, Star Trek First Contact, David from P Prometheus, and I'm probably gonna get this last one wrong, Wei Weyoun from St uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Weyoun, Weyoun, Jeffrey Combs' acting in all of these Trek roles are amazing. Yeah. Alright, for me, Comms Officer Besta would probably be one of the best choices. Simply because he's a telepath. Yes. So, I was actually... To be honest, the amount of times Besta was nominated, the fact that he didn't win a role, I find hilarious. Mm. Spoilers. <laughs> so, yeah. I just think it's going to be any spoilers for anything. Yeah. If anyone's been keeping up, then they should... No, that he didn't actually win anything. <laughs> nope. Best of got nothing. Yeah. Just sort of sad so because I'm going to be... How many nominations did he get? He yeah. got nothing. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing. Um, I There's two roles I really expected him to win. And he missed out on both by just a handful of votes. So, so that's down to you, Babylon 5 fans. You came in and you took over the designing the ship and made it all Babylon 5 parts. Well, a large chunk of it is Babylon 5 parts. Or and, Doctor Who. And yet, you come into the ship's crew and you can't even nominate one person. I don't know. Anyway. Um, moving along. Moving along. Ship's Counselor. You'll recognise a couple of familiar names on this list. One of which I actually added as a request from one of my friends at work. Was I thought it would be absolutely great. Um, and that was Emperor Palpatine as Ship's Counselor. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Talk, talk you about your will shock. succumb to the power of the dark side. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about your shock. Good. Treatment. Good. Focus. Good. Any... Focus. That's your hate my bad you. Content, you. Eh? Yeah. Okay, uh, so we got the Joker. Which... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What? <laughs> yeah. So stupid. Dr. Tristan Adams from Star Trek. Lo and behold, Bester again. This is actually the one I expected him to win. Adria from Stargate SG-1, which would have been actually a decent choice, but the one that won it was Brother Cavill from Battlestar Galactica, which, in all honesty, is a pretty good choice in his own right as well. The, the sort of Cavill, Adria, and Bester were probably the three best on that list. For me, anyway. My opinion, see... my opinion, I would like to see the Joker as the counselor. Yes. <laughs> Joker. <laughs> I hate having to say it, but uh, I'm well, what Harley Quinn? agreeing. <laughs> Harley Quinn and the Joker together. Although Palpatine, oh god, would be funny. Palpatine would be funny because then he could just use shock treatment. <laughs> <laughs> what, you're done. not going to get that from the from the Joker anyway. No, he uses laughing gas. He no, also he uses electroshock therapy and just about any other possible oh, yeah, the nasty bag. treatment in the back in the book. Yeah, but Palpatine can literally use his own shock treatment. <laughs> Human shock treatment. Okay. Can you just picture um, the Joker having Sith powers? I could. I could oh, picture the God. Joker annoying the crap out of the Predator, just to <laughs> see what would happen. <laughs> it's like, do you want to know where I got these? Let me take your armor off. Here, smell my flower. Yeah. Do you, do you want to know do where I got I these scars from? Yeah. Your scars are worse than mine. Okay, shall we continue? Yes, Chief Engineer. We have Baal again. We have Repli Carter. We have Michael again. We have Dalek Sank. We have Mr. Book from Dark City. And Obadiah Stane from Iron Man. We actually had quite a few movie nominations in this. Obadiah, it's Obadiah Stane. Yeah. Yes. I was torn between Replicata and Stane. Yeah. Mm. Well, for me, Re for me, Replicata was the hands down win simply because um, when designing the ship, some geniuses voted the replicators to be the rep the robots that repair the ship. How that idea. would end badly, it's just, I could just see that ending so catastrophically bad. But Replicata won, and she can more than easily keep Replicators in check. So, all of a sudden, the problem of the Replicators eating the ship disappears. So, yeah. Mind you, I wouldn't have mind seeing Michael win that one either. 
Okay, and now, last but not least, we have CAG. And... Sure, well, this is kind of a blowout. This is... This is sort of a, a battle of the battle of the two big names and two losers, effectively. Mm. The two losers were Scar from Battlestar Galactica and Khan from Star Trek Into Darkness. Good. Got Benedict Cumberpatch. Yeah. You don't belong in our universe. Uh, I, actually, I actually enjoy Benedict Cumber oh, Cumberpatch. Oh, for God's sakes. Stop beating up on the new stuff. It was actually pretty good if you leave your freaking expectations at the fucking The second door. one was great, but it's got... And then there's the first one, which... I'm anyway... We, we, we've had that discussion every week. Yes, so we do. Back, back to not bashing Reboot Trek. We have Darth Vader and Besta, which who I genuinely love to watch actually go at it in a in a dogfight to see who could win. Da, 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 da. That is right. Metal Rift. Darth either, Vader won. Zip it or I will get the duct tape. <laughs> hey, no, no, I was actually voicing my opinion. No, no, he, he, he actually called it. He was he was doing a good thing for a change. It's the first bloody time anyway, ever. He, he could have let us have a freaking vote. Yeah, I know. Have your vote. No. Have your vote. Does it seem like yeah? Yeah, well, <laughs> there was no real choice there anyway. Don't yeah, let's just face it's, it. It's Anakin. Period. Yes, yeah, no, I'm yeah. using his real name. I don't care. I can. I can. I can. Cosplaying as everyone can. I be going up to Darth Vader cosplayers. Tapping them on the shoulder, they turn around and you, and you say, Hi, Anakin, because I know you're getting a death stare through the mask. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I can say this. The reason why Darth Vader would be a great dogfighter, everyone saw Anakin's, well, efforts in Episode 3. That was astounding. The yeah. whole thing with the buzz droids. Yeah. The only downside I could see is once he went from Anakin to Vader, he only knew how to fly in a straight line in a ditch, and he still got shot from the side. <laughs> And you, can if almost, was... you can almost chalk that up to the fact that he was flying an incomplete prototype. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Otherwise, you should technically put it as Anakin, not um, Darth Vader. That's a good. Oh, but wait, could... there was also know. Darth Vader before he was turned into a cyborg. Nah, not for very long. There was a twenty. There was like a half hour set, setting in the movie where he was Darth Vader before robotics. Yeah. And that half hour was the entire fight between him and Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I have the higher ground, Anakin. Yeah, yeah because oh, going that close to lava won't co cause you to spontaneously fucking combust at all. God, that that script was horrendous. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, moving Move right along, on. we're gonna jump away to a break really quickly. I'm gonna play the audio for the Avengers: Age of Ultron trailer number three. Oh, um, God, when we come that. back, we're gonna have a bit of a chat about it since we're already halfway through the bloody show, which. I honestly wasn't paying enough attention to, and yeah, we dragged it out way too long. Anyway, on to the ad break. Have fun. Be back in a circle. I was designed to save the world. People who have looked to the sky and see hope. I'll take that from them first. There's only one path to peace. Their extinction. I tried to create a suit of armor around the world. But I created something terrible. Artificial intelligence. It's called the Ultron Program. I'm sick of watching people pay for our mistakes. Isn't why we fight so we can end the fight and go home? Well, you amazingly failed. <laughs> Here we all are. With nothing but our wit and our will to save the world. So stand and fight. No way we all get through this. I got no plans tomorrow night. I'm always picking up after you, boys. We can tear them apart. From the inside. That's the best you can do! <laughs> yeah, 
And I think the trailer is over, so we are back. Um, so, for those who haven't seen it, you have my permission to go and watch it really quickly so you know what we're talking about. For those who have seen it, and I'm assuming it's all six of you, because that's how many listeners we have, two or three of those six are, at, are people on the podcast. So, yeah... Anyway, so we just want to have a quick discussion. What did we think of the trailer? Vision, 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 vision. This is brilliant. Just Duct cause tape. vision. Yep. Just cause vision. <laughs> okay, you've made your point clear. Yeah. Right. Okay, so for me, it was instead of it just being the, the creepy bad guy intro, which is what the first sort of two trailers really were. It's... Ultron has daddy issues. <laughs> Ultron's always had daddy issues, regardless of who made him. He's got daddy issues. He thinks he's fucking Pinocchio. You <laughs> don't really need to go beyond that to realise he's got daddy issues. <laughs> I thought all robots have um, daddy issues. Well, he's got more daddy issues than daddy issues exist. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's effectively sort of t- says what his plan is. His plan is like, look, I was created to to sort of bring peace, so I'm going to bring peace by killing everybody. Therefore, there's no way they can fight anymore. It's a little bit like, um, there's about uh, what looks like 50, 100 of you compared to about 6 billion people. I'm sure that somewhere somebody can fight back enough to stop you if you really try. But I'm going to let the Avengers deal with you. Have fun. What else? See, I, s- I still have some questions that I want answered in the trailer, which is a good thing for me. Yep. Which is the ca- that. When, like in the past two um ones that we've seen we've seen the cave we still don't know what that cave was about yet or who was in it so that makes me um excited so, yeah because i still uh, i still think it's involved with black panther somehow yeah i can agree although to be fair ever since the mcu announcement with spider-man back black panther's been no, pushed back no, so nothing's far nothing's gonna happen with spidey it's, it's done way before that was it was already yeah. been Post Russian trailers were out way before Spidey was announced. Yeah, I know, but they, now they literally have had to go on back, reshoot a whole bunch of it just to get him in. That wouldn't have, wouldn't have gone out of time. Yeah, there, there's no. We already know that there is no chance in hell of Spidey being in this. The best case scenario, Spidey joins in um, Civil Cap. War. Civil War. Yeah. Anyway, um, for probably the to me, there's still a couple of shots in there that look like they're partially finished CG, they're not complete CG. Like that building collapsing to me. Yeah. Five bucks says in the final version, that thing is just swarming with fucking Ultron robots. Yeah. Um, I've only got one major gripe. Here we go. So far. So far. Go on. Gripe us, bring us down. Is it possible for... Banner to have spent any more time checking out Black Widow's ass. <laughs> the better question is, how was the Hulk flying the Iron Man suit up the building? Yeah, that, that was impressive. What she of is... utter, utter fart power. <laughs> <laughs> Gamma farts. Give him Who the, greasy, the Hulk a greasy chemi changer yeah. and two tequila shots and watch him fly higher than a hey, yeah. missile. Yeah. Deadpool sticks his head out. Did someone say Jimmy <laughs> Chunga? Yeah. <laughs> Don't think Deadpool can make enough Jimmy Chungas. Actually, on the note of Avengers, um, uh, Scarecrow, Amy, and Stuart, would you guys be willing to watch it day one if I do my oh, best to cover the car- charges? Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm getting a preview screening two days before it's released. Well, I plan on watching it up with um, up wherever you guys are. Indro. It's, it's east. He was thinking the best location will be Indro, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Indro is easiest. Indro is easiest. Yeah. Can all get, yeah, can all get Indro. 
I'm like not million. shouting everybody gold class. That's like 300 oh, bucks. No, no, no. Oh, I think Jardy will be coming. Well played, Andy. Well kill played. If you play and bring her along. Yeah. I, I heard that buried in a mug set. I'm not silly. Anyway, yes, <laughs> jo yes, Stuart, she's welcome. I forgot to mention it in the post, but yeah. All right, cool. So that'll mean the you will hear about the Avengers movie if Metal Rift sees it early and we all see it day one. Because uh, we I'm... will be able to talk about it that week on the podcast. No, which will my... mean it'll be on the podcast pretty much before it airs in America. So, haha, ha, America, we win. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. It airs Thursday. It's premiered Thursday. I'll be seeing it the Tuesday, I believe. Oh, the Wednesday, I believe. We'll, yeah. We'll yeah, but it's still going to be a week. It's over a week after we get to see it. Yeah. That it airs in America. It doesn't oh. air until May over there. Yeah. yeah they didn't get until May 1st. Yeah. Well, so, that's what happened last time. We got it at Antarctic. They didn't get until like the 2nd of May. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Okay. <laughs> anyway. I um, want to discuss Vision and this particular thing with Vision, actually. Yes. You mean you mean Vision, the literal embodiment of his daddy issues. Yeah, the host of Ultron. Yeah. I want to talk about his little yellow stone. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. I know exactly there what. There is a theory, but that, that the little yellow rock on his forehead is an Infinity Stone. Yeah. I, I'm I'm jumping on this bandwagon right now. Which uh, would which would make perfect sense in setting up the Infinity War. Yes, it would. All right, so all right, let's do a quick tally of where all the Infinity Stones are, including this theory. Okay, we've got well, you've got the Tesseract. That's an Infinity Stone, supposedly. We've yes. got Loki's staff. We've got Loki's staff. Um, we've got the um sphere from Guardians. Yep. We've... And we've got possibly Ultron. Yeah. Which so not Ultron, but Vision. Yeah. That still, still leaves one more. Well, exactly. you've got the yeah, you've got the Stone in Guardians. You've got the. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll be interesting. And I think that one more will come into Civil War. Yeah. No. No, it'll come in at the start of... It'll be in probably part one of Infinity Wars. Because no, I, oh, no, I, 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 no, no, what I can see it happening is it comes in towards the end of Civil War. Yeah. And that leads into Infinity War. Yeah. What I would love to see, and I said this back when um, the first Avengers movie finished, is I would love to see at the end of these movies like say before Age of Ultron sort of starts have the setup at the end of the movies sort of tie in all at the same timeline so each movie finishes and the last shot is say spaceships all flying in from orbit and them just going well shit crap <laughs> and then at the end of the whole the, the whatever movie next say Ant-Man or whatever at the end of Ant-Man that same sort of scene but from a different angle at a different oh. position hey, um, and then question. and then question. Do, but do that for all those movies that'd be pretty cool question what's coming up um, first Black Panther or um, Ultron Ant-Man oh, sorry not oh. Ultron um, Infinity War Black Panther's before Infinity War yeah Black Panther's okay. before Infinity War okay that's where I reckon the next the last introduction Probably. of Infinity Stones yeah. could be if it's not, it's not Civil stuff. War then it'll be in Black Panther yeah Okay, anyway, so Stuart says he's got a lot of news. So... I have a ton of news to get through. Okay, so since... But before that... No, 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 I was going to say... Um, what I was going to say, Stuart, since you stole my thunder again, you're fired <laughs> again, twice in an episode, making up for all the ones I didn't fire you on. Um, I was going to say, since Stuart is the news guy, Amy has something really important to say. Which part? I don't know. You're the... It's your news. You're the one who's taking care of the okay. Amanda Tapping news. <laughs> okay. Um, we've got... Amanda Tapping has been nominated... Um, is actually the... Winner. Yeah. Winner of the Woman of the Year. Of... Thanks to actor. Yeah. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. That's, I actually sent her a message of congratulations on that, so... Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty awesome thing to win, actually. Yeah, and what was that other thing you mentioned um, a minute ago what, during okay. the uh, break? Amanda Tapping has um, was it was done in February, but has started the um, episode 104 of Dark Matter, an upcoming space drama from the producers of Westworld and Stargate. 
Amy, you there? You sound like you're muffled big time. Uh, I give up. There we go. That's you back to normal. <laughs> okay. 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 Stuart, say Amy's news for her. Um. So uh, back in February. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'll see what I can get from the from the jumbledness we got. Um, Amanda Tapping was directing an episode of something. I, Lost Black Dark Matter. No, Dark, Dark Matter. Dark Matter. Thank you. Um, an upcoming space drama. I was just about to say, what was she doing directing the Axia around? <laughs> That's a scary thought. From yeah, the producers she... of Lost Girl and Stargate. Which is really awesome, because uh, I actually really enjoyed Lost Girl, so... I can't wait for season 4 and 5 to come out to DVD. Oh yes, very much so. Anyway, Back on track, boys. My news! Yes, yes, go, 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 we've got... Right. Like ten minutes left. Alright. Wolverine three has a has a shooting date. But Oh god. But, but if you shoot Wolverine, doesn't he just heal? I was wondering when that Get out. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> he can't, so, he's the boss. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, See my bad jokes, they stay. I can't help it, it just happens. Stuart, go. Alright, so um Wolverine three will be shot early next year. That's just, that's all we've got. He just, there's not a date of when they're shooting. It's just early next year. So, well, it can it really be a Wolverine three after the events of um, Days of Future Past? No, this, this this is apparently Wolverine three. Mm. This is actually Wolverine three. So somehow are, they're gonna do it. We are talking about one of the only series that's worse than worse for Tommy Wimey stuff than Doctor Who. Nah, technically. All right, yeah. moving along. Or well, did you want to quickly say something? No, go, go, go. Now for a little bit of sad news. Half Bennett has passed away. Don't kill me, dude. I'm sorry, but Wrath of Khan is like my favorite science fiction movie for of all time. For those who don't know, he was the producer of the Star Trek movies and the, um, the classic uh, TV series. So Two, enjoy. three, four, five, and six. So he worked very close with Leonard Nimoy in all of them. Yes. Yeah. Which is it's a really, a... really sad time. Yeah. Yes. To, to lose two of the big Star Trek names in a week is really sad, and to almost yeah, lose absolutely. Harrison Ford, which I'm stealing your news on that one. Uh, oh no! I had a horror. You had a beautiful, horrible pun for it. I'm well aware. That's why I'm stealing it from you because no, I'm, I'm my... the king of horrible puns, and you cannot steal that title from me. I did the pun first. Har Harrison Ford had a crash on the golf course. He was flying solo. Go away. You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is this is why Han Solo has cheery about because Han can't fly a ship on his own. Wait, right. well, did you see what the um I can't remember which newspaper they put in um the comic section, um Indiana Jones and the Fairway of Doom. Yes, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> I like the photo of the guys carrying the stretcher away photoshopped to have him in carbonite. <laughs> <laughs> There's another picture that someone um, edited. It's the golf course, and there's just the Millennium, Millennium Falcon crashed on it. Yeah. yeah. The, the only problem I had with that photo was the Millennium Falcon in the picture that I saw, at least, it had crashed ass first. So it's, it's, <laughs> it reversed from orbit into the into the thing. It's like, it's like, uh, d d all right. what? <laughs> Moving along anyway. to some Doctor Who. Yes. No, next news. Go go go. Uh, spoilers for this. Missy is going to be a, is going to be a full time companion in series nine. Not phase, to be honest. Uh, hey, they can't do worse than Clara. Just saying. Uh, uh, look, uh, the, 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 the doctor. They already have the doctor and Missy sort of interaction is good. They've got really good chemistry, but it's not all the time. Just By not, not a whole fucking season. Uh, yeah, not a whole the time. Worse Ta than Clara. Yeah. I believe it was called Amy Pond. Ooh, ooh. Okay. If you if you want to send your hate mail, send it I to just... scarecrow at please don't kill us dot com. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just sense a disturbance in the forest, like millions of voices cried out at once. No yes, more, hey, no hey, more jokes for you. When it was Amy when it was Amy Pond on Doctor Who, it was no longer Doctor Who, it was the Amy Pond show with Friend. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay, we've we've beaten this horse before. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It still yeah. keeps coming back. Bring along to some. Whoa! Echo. Wow, that's creepy. 
<laughs> when playing with echoes is fun. And there goes the railway train. Yeah. We're well off the track this time. Uh, moving on to some arrow news and some really awesome arrow news. So the plot, the uh, the uh, plot for the Suicide Squad episode, Suicidal Tendencies, has been dropped. Call the call. Hallelujah. The metal reference. Yes. So uh, Diggle and Lila get. I'm gonna go into this. Sorry. Spoilers. Diggle and Lila get married. Again. Again. <laughs> Uh, Deadshot then interrupts them on his honeymoon, on their honeymoon, and tells them that, and tells them that the Suicide Squad has been given a new mission. And this, this ties into another piece of news. Rescue United States, State Senator Joseph Cray. Now, with that, Joseph Cray is being played by, by Winter Soldier, um, Captain America Winter Soldier's Stephen Culp. Oh my god. So what you're saying is, they're setting up the best crossover in history. Captain yes. America versus Arrow. Yes. So uh, no, so better yet, Hawkeye versus Arrow. Uh -oh. Yes. That I can see happening. That. <laughs> what happens to Arsenal? <laughs> yeah, he yeah, gets he, he gets caught in the crossfire. <laughs> Ooh. The, the, the poor thing that happens to Arsenal is he gets his ass kicked. Yeah, and and so um obviously Suicide Squad go and rescue him. Um, there is a new member to the Suicide Squad. It Arrow is Cupid. What? <laughs> it's it's Cupid, played by by Amy um Gumenek. So it's another archer, basically. Basically. Oh boy, oh boy, a show about archers full of archers. Uh. Meanwhile, Oliver find, uh, finds out about um the Atom outfit, and him and uh, Ray have a bit of a fight. So oh. yeah, that's that. That's sort of like Hawkeye fighting Iron Man. It's. Tony Hawk first Darth Vader. It's just <laughs> it's not gonna end well. <laughs> Alright, now we've got some funny arrow news actually, and this is really cool. Enough with arrow, dude, I'm sorry, but No it's not that good. You've got you've got a few minutes left, go with the arrow news. Haha, yeah. uh -huh. I, I I I count as four votes. There's only four other people, so unless everybody says no, I win. Stephen Amel re reveals hilarious reason his first Wait, arrow comes what? shoot reshot. What was Did it? you just say Stephen Anal? Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, I said it wrong, just to piss everyone off. <laughs> that was because I know Jody's gonna be watching. I'm gonna get an angry message. <laughs> waiting for <laughs> it. I'm waiting for it. Now, if it was me and I'd said that, I would probably be hearing my phone go beep 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 right about now. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so the reason they had to reshoot his first um his first outfit shot is um. Hair split? No. <laughs> well, it involves it involves something to do with down there. Let's just say he was a little excited at the time. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Are you sure it's just so, and so he quotes, and that's the story of, of of how we almost became on the show about the hooded vigilante with a bone on. Wow. <laughs> uh, is this the time to say it? Yes. <laughs> I don't want to think about tight pants and that. That's just going into itchy territory. So yeah, th this this is this has gone so far off the rails that we need a warp engine to get back. All right, moving along. Supergirl. Yes. yes. Enough with DC. Fuck's sake. Yeah. No, I like DC. I as much as I like DC. There is I such a thing as really, too much. really don't yeah. like DC. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. keep going with the news. You got less than five minutes. So uh, we have we have a Supergirl and we have a look of the outfit. And what actually, outfit? really, really, the Supergirl outfit, like what she's going to wear in the show. Which is very little. <laughs> Bing. Bing. Right. Well, actually, they actually come with, come with a lot of it up. Actually, like she still has her skirt, but they've given her stockings over over her leg and like knee high boots. Yeah, because that the, that the doesn't top, look awkward the top's at all. It's not that revealing either. Yeah. Like it's Re a proper, like it's a, a proper top, and it's like long sleeve with, like, and obviously the S symbols in the middle. Yeah. Random note: Did you know in the comic book, Superman put Supergirl in a giant glass tube thing and blasted her off, blasted her off to an asteroid for a year? Yeah. Over his that's girlfriend, much? It was. It, it, Superman also made out with her at one point, pretending that she was his wife to piss off Lois Lane for. Yeah. Uh, 
it was a weird time of DC Comics back then. Anyway, news, go, bam. Star Wars, some Star Wars Rebels news. Sarah yeah. Michelle Gellar to star in, in Star Wars Rebels Season 2. What? Ooh. Oh, yes. Oh, fuck's sake. Yes. I'm going to have to put up with necrophilia in there as well. <laughs> so, Sarah Michelle Gellar has signed on for Season 2. The reason why this is, and I really, really love this, by the way, is that Vader will not be the main villain. We are going to have a Mara Jade Skywalker. Yes! However, it's not oh, right. called, she's not actually going to be called Mara Jade. Oh, God. That doesn't come till later. Let me guess. No, 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 no. She's not called Mara hand? Jade at all. No, no, no. She has a name. And it's, and it's actually a really nice tribute to Timothy Zahn, who, um, who's the, who's the guy who created, um, who created, um, Mar Mara Jade. It's, I'm gonna get the first name wrong, because it's horrendous. It's, um, Amela, um, Zahn. So her last name is Zahn, and not Timothy Zahn. Nice little tribute there. Yeah. Alright, but it's still not Mara Jade. Yes. Well, it's gonna be the Mara Jade role, so she's gonna be, a, she's gonna be the Emperor, uh, uh, the Emperor's Fist. Emperor's hand. Emperor's hand, Emperor's fist. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. The Emperor's fist is a freaking ship, you dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. I haven't had dinner. Go, go. News. Two minutes. Go. I yeah, think I'm out of news. No, you're not. There's still one piece of Star Wars news you haven't said. Oh, yeah. Star Wars uh, named the first canonical uh, uh, lesbian uh, character. Okay. Not... Exactly what I was referencing, I don't think, but continue. <laughs> I may have missed something. <laughs> I, think I, I, I think I'm the one that missed something, because this is the first I've heard about this and I'm scared. Yeah, actually, keep talking. <laughs> I keep this one in the dark. So in the new, in, um, in Laws of Sith, which is scheduled for um, April 25th uh, release this year, uh, Paul Kemp introduces Moff Moors, an Imperial who has made some very serious mistakes, but she an, is an incredibly capable leader and spends much of the book working hard to prevent absolute failure. She also happens to be a lesbian. His quote. Jolly good. Yeah. So, what's going on with her favourite the, 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 the Star Wars news that I was going to mention was... In, oh, Ahsoka. Yeah, yeah, Ahsoka in Star Wars Rebels. That was what I was trying to get you to talk about. I told and you, then you chat. And then you <laughs> randomly started talking about a lesbian. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I kept that one in the dark. Uh, we have yeah, three minutes. You could say it, you could say it I kept that one in the closet. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, so Ahsoka news. At the Ahsoka end of the last episode of Star yeah. Wars Rebels that just aired, we it was Which revealed I this months ago. By the way, did, no, you just didn't. Spit it out. Ahsoka. Fulcrum. Ahsoka is Fulcrum. Which was really it. cool. It is yeah, not the, it, the way they did this is really awesome. Um, they all went to go. They all went to um, Mustafa to go save um, Kanan. Yeah. And so Fulcrum contacts Chopper, um, trying to find everyone else. And so it ends up that Fulcrum leads the rest of the Rebel Alliance to go save them. Yes, yeah. we actually get the rest of the big ships. No big ships. They're all bloody Carillion Corvettes. They're little ships. Yeah, they haven't rescued the Cows yet, have they? Yeah. So, um, so you just said a heap of Carillion Corvettes rock up, about a half dozen or so shoot the crap yeah. out of the fighters and they get the hell out of there. Um, and then, uh, and then they flying. get on the ship, they walk up, they're like, who was flying our ship? What the <laughs> hell? And then they walk up the thing and then they go, oh, um, maybe it was Fulcrum. And then Ahsoka slides down the rails. Before that, there was a hollow message from Senator Bail Organa. Yeah. Yes. So so we get, so we know he's involved as well. Yeah. But yeah, oh, yeah Bail's... And Ahsoka slides down and, and yeah. says it's Fulcrum. Bale cool was like one of the, the founders cool of the Alliance. Yeah, well, yes. The cool thing with Ahsoka is the cons is the art of her lightsabers. They are not green and yellow this time. They are silver. She's become grey. She's become a grey knight. Yes. Yeah. One minute. And for those who don't know what a grey knight is, a grey knight is someone who who neither uh, represents the light or the dark. They try to keep balance. That's pretty cool. I prefer the t I prefer the phrase Twilight Lord of the Sith. Okay, so we have 20 seconds to say our goodbyes. Go Stuart. Hi everyone. Go Metal Rift. Hi everybody. Go Amy. Bye all. Go Scarecrow. See you next week. So, 
I will see you all next week. I will let you having some fun between now and then. And I have a really cool video that I will be uploading very soon. <laughs> 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 very soon. <laughs>